Hey everyone, last week we went over operant conditioning. This week we'll go over respondent or classical conditioning. Have you ever gotten sick after eating a certain type of food, so now you feel nauseated every time you're around it or even just smell it? If so, you've been the subject of classical conditioning. It might sound strange to hear that you've learned to feel nauseated whenever you're around a particular food, but hear me out. At first you didn't feel any particular way about the food, but now you feel sick every time you look at it or smell that particular food. How did you change? Well, the simple answer is that you've learned an association. Your body already understands that feeling nauseated is bad. It also remembered the last thing you ate was a hot dog. So now it associates the hot dog with sick. Now this is a very generalized answer because several things can affect whether or not an association sticks. One is repetition. So if you ate a hot dog many times and got sick for most of those times, it's more likely that you'd make the association. Another is salience meaning how much the situation stood out. If it's your first time eating a hot dog and you get sick, it's more likely that you'd make the association. You are also more likely to make an association if the experience is negative rather than positive due to our inherent negativity bias. Relevance is also important. You later find out you got sick because of germs you caught from someone else, but you didn't get noticeably affected by the germs until after you ate the hot dog. So because of the closeness of the timing and the relevance of nausea to the stomach and food, the hot dog got the stronger association rather than the germs. To sum up so far, classical conditioning is a type of learning by association. There are several elements. One, you have the unconditioned stimulus, which is a stimulus that is usually in the environment. Next, you have the neutral stimulus, which is something that has no effect on the learner. Then you have the unconditioned response, which is a behavior that has not been learned or taught. Usually this is a natural response or reflex, such as feeling sick. There is also the conditioned stimulus, which is when the neutral one becomes associated with the unconditioned stimulus. The conditioned response is the new response after pairing the conditioned stimulus with the conditioned response. I know these can get confusing, so let me try to explain further. To start off, you have these three things, the virus, the hot dog, and getting nauseated. The virus is something from the environment is the unlearned or unconditioned stimulus. The hot dog is the neutral stimulus. You have no feeling towards it at first. The unconditioned or unlearned response is you feeling nauseated. Next, the neutral stimuli becomes the conditioned stimuli. The hot dog now has meaning to it. It's no longer just any food. The unlearned response is now the conditioned or learned response. It is a response tied to a specific neutral stimuli. You have three stages of conditioning for classical conditioning. One, before conditioning, you just have an encounter with the unconditioned stimulus and unconditioned response. So you have a virus that causes nausea. Then you have the stage during conditioning, which is when you make the association between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. The stomach virus and the hot dog now get associated in this stage. When this happens, the hot dog is known as the conditioned stimulus. Finally, there is after conditioning. This is when the conditioned stimulus is paired with the conditioned response. This is the point where all hot dogs make you feel nauseated. Your nausea may extend to other similar stimuli such as sausages, which is known as generalization. If the reaction is solely to hot dogs, it is known as discrimination. What we've covered mainly deals with the acquisition of learning the association, but you can unlearn it as well. Extinction happens in classical conditioning when the unconditioned stimulus is no longer paired to the conditioned stimulus. This means that you want to stop the virus from being associated with the hot dog. If you want to stop feeling sick every time you see a hot dog, here's how you might go about it. You can eat a hot dog every so often. You'll feel nauseated the first few times, but because you don't have the stomach bug in your system, you won't feel it as extremely and eventually you unpair the association of hot dogs and the virus. There's also this issue to where after a period of time the association will reappear. This is what sometimes happens with phobias. After learning not to be afraid of heights anymore, they'll randomly feel scared again. This is known as spontaneous recovery. It can actually be a good sign because this means you're on the track to completely extinguishing the response. Extinction occurs very rapidly after a spontaneous recovery. It's just about everything you can learn about classical conditioning. Now sometimes people get confused about the differences between classical conditioning and operant conditioning. So let's go through those before we end. Classical conditioning is learning through association. Classical conditioning requires that you place the neutral stimulus before a reflex, a behavior that you can't control. I didn't cover Ivan Pavlov or his dogs because the story has been told to death, 
but for this reason classical conditioning is usually associated with dogs. I also use this association to strengthen the learning process. All of the examples involve the hot dog, and any time I say classical conditioning in this video, I've paired it with the sound of a dog barking. Operant conditioning is learning through consequences. It has the ideas of reinforcements and punishments. It focuses on behaviors you can control, and involves applying stimuli after a behavior. B.F. Skinner is the one who describes it using a Skinner box, a cage with a rat inside. So normally it's associated with rats and mice. So there you have it, classical conditioning. Next week we'll look at social learning theory. Like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.